Hey, Julia. Hey, Richard. Do you remember last year, I think it was, we came to see Frances Sedgwick and we had a look at her lovely Dexter cows? Unforgettable. Of course uh, I remember. They were amazing. Well, she's very kindly invited me back and you and Joe uh, to have a look at baby cows. Babies. Calves? Calves. Calves. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I'm going to go and have a look at, uh, I'm going to have a chat with um, Frances and um, you go and have a look at the lovely calves. Awesome. Fantastic. See you in a mo. See you in a mo. Well, Francis, it's nice to see you again. Thank, Thank you, you so much for inviting not only Julia and I back, but also our lovely audience. And for those that don't remember, last year, and it seems incredible it was last year, that... September. Se yeah, was it September? September. Mm. Um, and that's 2020, as it's 2021 now as we record this. But last year we were invited to have a look at your wonderful Dexter cattle who were grazing, first of all, when we first met you, at the Storrington, at, sorry, the Stenning Downland Scheme in the, in the natural habitat there. Mm -hmm. um, and that was wonderful. And we'll put links so that you can go back and check out those videos. But then, of course, the end of the chain, as it were, was that very stressful time for you, but a very important time for the whole process of having cattle and that was when you had to send them to send um, a couple of them to yeah. the abattoir that's right and that must have been quite a difficult experience it was very difficult but it's all part of the process yes but so you've invited me and yeah. Julia back because we're at the beginning of life as it were for yeah. a Dexter cattle but before that of course you have a pregnant cow yes you do and just like human, she's pregnant for nine months. Oh right, nine months. Yes, so it's exactly the same. Um, so these ladies have been, uh, they were served by the bull last um, June, July, well July and August he was here. And in May now we're having the calves and this is always the joyful part and the bit I really enjoy. Absolutely, and I'm sure, you know, kids, you know, they, and I was, well, I was gonna say, I'm sure kids really love it when they see the calves, but these days, of course, you don't see, um, children don't get so much access but we'll talk about that a bit later yes um, so you've got a newborn calf but what does that involve okay well to begin with um, when I know she's just about to calve um, I've got an idea of when she's served so I start looking out for signs of when she's going to calve and what they usually do is separate themselves away from the herd members and go and find a quiet place in the field Mine are all naturally grazing on grass. They, there's no, no shelters, they, they carve out in the field. And that's why May is a good time for carving because the weather's hopefully better. Um, so I will watch for the signs and see that one, she will be starting to bag up so her udder will start to enlarge and fill with milk. And then she'll separate herself from the herd and I'll know that she's about to carve. Yes. Hopefully it's a normal presentation and the calf will come feet first and nose first and if you see the normal presentation she should just carve on her own and Dexter's are known for their easy carving oh so <laughs> that's very not useful a lot, um, yeah don't need to yes. interfere with them much no. and then the next thing you've got to look out for is that the calf is obviously alive and it has to get up and suckle and it must have that colostrum within the first two hours of birth because that's got all the antibodies, all the nutrients, um, and all the energy to survive. Yes. And they've got to get that colostrum into them. And that's all waiting to come out, presumably. And yes. 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 And it reduces very quickly. So within 12 hours, there's only 50% colostrum available oh, right. to the calf. And by 24 hours, there's hardly any. So it's just dense so milk. So it's so important to get that colostrum into them. But not only that, is you've got to make sure the actual milk is coming out of the udder. And because I handle mine a lot, I'm always making sure that I can touch their, yes. their feet, their heads, their legs and their udder. So as soon as they've calved, I make sure I can express some milk out of every single quarter. So Francis, you've got your cattle, you've got your new calf born. Presumably there's that legal side to the whole business. There is, yes, it's a government... Um, quite stringent, I imagine. 
Very, yes, and you've got certain days. As a responsible keeper, you have um, certain legislation to keep, um, to apply by. And one of them is each animal has to have its own passport. It's done on an individual ear tag right. number. So I have my own herd number. So it's a UK and then my individual herd number. And then the animal has its own unique identity. So once the calf is born, you then have to register it and you have to say what breed it is, whether it's male or female, the date of birth, the dam and the sire. And right. that has all the details written on it and that stays with the cow for all its life. So it is important that every yeah. single animal has a passport and the um, British Cattle Movement Society know where each animal is. And so you were talking about they were tagged. What's um, that? So you have to apply for a passport within 27 days of the calf being born. And unique to that, um, the, the calf, or the cow, or the, the animal, when it's born, is an ear tag that relates to the passport. Right. So it's got the same, same herd num number and the individual number for the, yes. for the calf. And that has to be put into the animal's ear within 20 days of birth for a beef cattle. If it was a dairy animal, one ear tag must be in within 36 hours and the second one within 20 right. um, days. And they must have two tags, one in each ear. And is that something you, you do here or do you get someone in to do that? Um, no, it's all done here. Right. Um, the tool that you use... Uh oh for... this is going to be gruesome. <laughs> this is to put the ear tag into the right. calf's ear. So it's like a hole punch. So you put one part of the ear tag on that side and the other side in there. And then that's the ear and you pierce it through. So it's Is like it? piercing, piercing your own ear. Yes. Easy now, to do? Um, because of my condition with my weak um, wrists and my joints, I actually can't do that operation right. myself. So that is something that my husband Simon does. So he's the chief ear tagger. You showed me another implement just before we f filmed, which made me slightly wince because <laughs> it was to do with castration. Oh, yes. Can you yes. Show, show me that? Now, obviously, you only need to castrate the little boys right. and it's best to do it within one or two days of birth. So as soon as you can feel the testicles have dropped, um, you put a rubber ring which is a small little tiny ring, the same as you would with a sheep's tail, right. when they dock a tail, they yes. put a rib, uh, rubber ring on it, and it cuts the blood supply and the tail falls off. So this is um, an implement that you put, um, you make sure, you put it into, on the scrotum, make sure the two testicles are below it, then close the ring and you've got both enclosed. And the, um, the, the, it just cuts off the blood supply. Oh, so see. within a week or so, you it find that the sack has dropped off dropped and off. they are um, castrated. But it is, this is one they don't actually notice. They might flinch with the ear tag, Yes. But and I do this one, um, and, and they never even notice. Sometimes I do it when the calf is just sleeping, and you can just put it on there and he doesn't even know that you've done it. The other thing with cattle, with different breeds, now Dexters are a horned breed, so they naturally would have a horn and grow. Um, and obviously I don't particularly want an animal with horns because management and because mine do a lot of conservation grazing and with a lot of people and dogs, I don't want a horned animal milling around with people. No. So the other thing I do with them is disbud them. Now that again is the kindest way to do that is within the first couple of days of birth as soon as you can feel those little horn buds appearing that's when to do it so what does it so what is I this i use one? something called a dehorning paste right and it's a caustic um, material that dissolves the tiny little buds then it never it never grows back and it never grows back that the is incredible other way of doing it is um, to use a hot iron. Oh gosh, is, that does sound painful. It is harder. Yeah. This, with the paste, you must do before they're seven days old. Oh right. And I tend to do it day two, really. Yeah. As soon as you can feel them, and, and they're not stressed about it. Um, the hardest thing is the mother calling yes. for the baby of while course. you're sitting there inside the shed just putting the paste on.
the legal side is every cattle um, animal has to have a passport but mine in addition to that because they're pedigree Dexter cattle they have their own pedigree certificate and you must register that with the Dexter Cattle Society within um, 30 days of it being born. So it's similar to dogs, where the pedigree dogs... It is, yeah. exactly. So with the pedigree certificate, it would have the or prefix, which mine is Greyfriars, and then an individual name and pedigree registration for that animal. So the little, the female that I've been halter training, she's um, in line with the countryside management theme is her name is going to be Idalia, which is a butterfly. Oh, and okay. Her mother is Greyfriars Didymer, which is also a butterfly. So there are my themes, and each year I have a different letter. So we're on I this year. And the more work you do as a youngster, as a, as a calf, the, the nicer they are as, a, as an adult. And I make sure I do lots of handling with them because when they become a, um, a new mum themselves, they're used to having their udder touch, they're used to being tied up for the foot trimmer and for any other um, thing you need to do, TB testing. So any female I'm going to keep in the herd, I make sure I spend a lot of time with it and halter train it to make it handleable because it's going to stay in the herd for many, many years. Yeah. So I've put a lot of time into little Idalia because she's going to be one of my uh, replacement um, um, females. Hey, Julia. Hi. Oh, what about that? That was rather fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah, amazing. Um, Joe was a little bit too young, really, wasn't he? Yeah, he's just at that awkward stage. He's coming into terrible twos, so... Yeah, it's n n not easy. But aren't they beautiful, those lovely, tiny little calves? They're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so um, big thanks to Francis for letting us uh, have a look. And how interesting and educational that was. Yes, and real therapy as well yeah as as francis said to us herself yeah you know, it's so an... nice to get out with animals that don't answer back yeah <laughs> anyway uncomplicated animals i hope you enjoyed that thank you for watching hopefully we'll be back again if francis invites us another time and we'll show you more of the development of her wonderful dexters but in the meantime give us a thumbs up don't forget to follow like and subscribe and all those usual things and we'll see you next time Ta-ta for now. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye, baby. Bye.